Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using a discriminant function analysis as a post hoc test for a MANOVA or multivariate analysis of variance. After conducting a MANOVA, we have several choices for post hoc tests. Among those choices, we have the discriminant function analysis, which we can think of as a MANOVA in reverse. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS, I have an independent variable program. It's going to be an independent variable for a MANOVA. And two dependent variables, functioning and social interactions. So let's assume that the functioning variable is an observation on an instrument designed to measure functioning with a higher score indicating a higher level of functioning. And the social interactions variable represents the number of social interactions in a week. Moving back to our independent variable, we have two levels for this variable. One is REBT, Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, and another would be a cognitive therapy with an emphasis on social skills. So you have REBT, and then another cognitive behavioral therapy that emphasizes social skills. So we want to see if we observe a difference between these two groups on these two independent variables. And we'll also assume that these two dependent variables are related. So it's logical that we would proceed with MANOVA. If these two dependent variables were unrelated, we may want to consider simply running two ANOVAs. There are several assumptions to meet before proceeding with ANOVA. They are beyond the scope of this video, but I have them covered in other videos. So I'm just going to proceed directly to MANOVA. So I'm going to analyze, general linear model, and then multivariate. And this is what the dialog looks like by default. So for the dependent variables list box, I'm going to load functioning and social interactions, those two variables. And for the fixed factor list box program. Now, because program only has two levels, in this particular instance, we would not have any post hoc tests available. You would need three levels or more. SPSS will still allow you to move the variable into the post hoc test for list box and to check off different post hoc tests but of course there won't be any result. So I'm just going to cancel this and moving to options I am going to display the means for the program independent variable, descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, observed power, and homogeneity tests. And click continue. Then I'll click OK to perform the MANOVA. So we can see we have between subjects factors to start off. We have this table. Program is coded as 0 or 1, 0 associated with REBT, and 1 with the cognitive therapy that has the emphasis on social skills. Taking a look at the descriptive statistics, we can see that the mean for functioning is lower for the REBT group, and the mean for social interactions is also lower for the REBT group. Moving down to Box's test of equality of covariance matrices, we can see here we have a Box's M value of 3.295, and the result is not statistically significant. So we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis and assume that we have equality of covariance matrices. Moving down to the multivariate tests table, for Palais trace under program, we have a p-value of 0 0.006, which is statistically significant. It's lower than 0 0.05. So this is telling us that we have a statistically significant difference between the REBT group and the social skills group on a linear combination of the two dependent variables, functioning and social interactions. Moving down to the Levine's test of equality of error variances, both for functioning and social interactions, we have a non-statistically significant p-value 
0.368 and 0.123 are both greater than 0.05. So we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis in this case and assume we have equal error variances. Moving down to the tests of between subjects effects. We're going to go to program. We can see for functioning we have a p-value of 0.145 and for social interactions a p-value of 0.001. Because we have two dependent variables, functioning and social interactions, we want to make sure that we control for an inflation of a type 1 error risk. If we're using an alpha of 0.05, the probability of a type 1 error is 5%. However, here we have two dependent variables, functioning and social interactions. So we're going to want to apply a Bonferroni correction to the alpha value to control for type 1 error. So we'll take the alpha, 0 0.05, and divide it by the number of dependent variables, in this case 2. So the value would be 0 0.025. With that in mind, we take a look at these p-values and we see that we have a non-statistically significant result for functioning and a statistically significant result for social interactions. So now let's take a look at a discriminant function analysis. As I mentioned before, we can think of it as a MANOVA in reverse. So I'll go back to the data editor and for a discriminant function analysis, instead of program being the independent variable, program is going to be the dependent variable and functioning and social interactions, these two variables are going to be independent variables instead of dependent variables. So a discriminant function analysis helps us determine the probability of group membership. In this case, membership in the REBT level of program or the social skills level of program. To conduct a discriminant function analysis, we'll go to analyze and then classify and then discriminant. Now again, just as we had with MANOVA, there would be assumptions that would have to be met for discriminant function analysis. And just as was the case with MANOVA, I have those covered in separate videos. So taking a look at the discriminant analysis dialog, the grouping variable in this case is going to be program and it's going to ask us to define the range. REBT is coded as 0 and social skills this level is coded as 1. So the minimum will be 0 and the maximum will be 1. I click continue so I've now defined that range. The independent variables in this case will be functioning and social interactions. Under statistics I'm going to select Means, Univariate ANOVAs, and Boxes M, and click Continue. Under Classify, I'm going to select Summary Table, and click Continue. And under Save, these are variables that can be saved to the data editor. So these variables do not appear in the results. They appear in the data editor as new variables. So you have predicted group membership, discriminant scores, and probabilities of group membership. I'm going to select all three, click Continue, and then click OK. In the first table, we can see that we had no cases that were excluded. Then we're provided with group statistics, including the mean and the standard deviation. Moving down to test of equality of group means, notice the p-value for functioning, 0.145 and for social interactions, 0 0.001. These are the same values that we observed up here in the results for MANOVA. We can see here under test of between subjects effects and program, 0.145 and 0 0.001. Moving back down to the results for the discriminant function analysis, we can see under test results that the value of boxes M and the p-value associated with that statistic identical to what we saw in MANOVA. Then moving down to the canonical correlation 
we can see that value here is 0.445. If we square this value, it'll give us the partial eta squared from MANOVA. So I'll bring up the calculator. 0.445 squared is 0.198. So I move back up to the MANOVA. You can see here under place trace, partial eta squared, 0.198. That's the effect size for the linear combination of the two dependent variables. Moving back to the output for the discriminant function analysis. I'm going to continue down to the functions at group centroids. So here for RABT, you can see we have negative 0.487. For social skills, we have 0.487. These values represent the mean discriminant score associated with this classification. So the mean discriminant score for RABT, negative 0.487, and for social skills, 0.487. And then moving down to classification statistics, to the last table, classification results, we can see how well the discriminant function analysis can predict group membership based on this data set. So you can see here under program for RABT, we look over to predicted group membership, we can see that there are 18 occasions when membership was RABT and that was also the predicted group membership. There were seven occasions when predicted group membership was the social skills level, however the level is actually RABT. So that's a 72 percent accuracy rate, that's 18 divided by 25. And you can see down here 72 percent. For social skills, we can see when the result was actually social skills, the predicted group membership was social skills 19 of 25 times, and the predicted group membership was RABT six times. That gives us an accuracy rate of 76 percent, 19 divided by 25. We can have another way of looking at this by looking at the data editor. I save those variables from the discriminant function analysis dialog. And you can see the first variable is the predicted group. So for record number one, the actual group was RABT, but the predicted group was social skills. We then have the actual discriminant score, which is 0.49, and the probability for membership in each group. So there's a 38% chance here that the group membership would be REBT and a 61% chance that it would be social skills. So the analysis returns social skills as the predicted group membership. Of course, in this case, it was incorrect. However, we can see in the next nine cases, it correctly predicted REBT was the group. And notice the discriminant scores associated with these results are all negative. So if we move back to the output and we take a look at the function at group centroids table again, we can see the mean discriminant score is negative for REBT and positive for social skills. Moving back to the editor. So as we move down this predicted group variable, we can see what the classification results had indicated, which is that the discriminant function analysis correctly predicted the group membership the majority of the time, 72% for the REBT level and 76% for the social skills level. And of course we can see all the associated discriminant scores and the probabilities for each record. Notice with the discriminant scores that are farther away from zero, regardless of whether they're negative or positive, we're going to have a probability that's farther away from a 50-50 chance. So here we have negative 1.87, and we have an 86% chance that it'll be REBT, and only a 13% chance that it'll be social skills. And of course, in this case, the actual level of social skills, RABT, was predicted. Looking at a discriminant score that's close to zero, for example, this record, 
negative 0.1, we would expect probabilities closer to 50-50. So in this case, 52% chance of group membership being REBT, 47% chance of being social skills. So it's helpful to look at these variables in combination with the classification results to see how well the independent variables predict group membership in the outcome variable. I hope you found this video on using a discriminant function analysis as a post hoc test for MANOVA to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.